Very happy to be back with James L. Brooks, writer, director, and our guest programmer. Great to see you. We've already talked about Annie Hall. Now you've selected Adam's Rib from 1949, of course, starring Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. Just a brilliant comedy in so many ways. And the sixth of the nine films that Tracy and Hepburn made together, for my money, it's the best. Would you agree? That picture is so clearly an all-timer and, and sort of, sort of, I guess, really the advance guard on feminism because that was very much the subject of the film. And uh, I, I think they were the first on their block to get there. It feels revolutionary in a way, especially when you see it through what you would imagine a 1949 lens would be. Of course, the screenwriters here are Ruth Gordon and Garson Kanan, just a brilliant team. And Judy Holliday, and I think it was one of the first roles of her life. Yes, yeah. and they really beefed up the role for her because they were hoping that they could get her cast in the Born Yesterday movie. So this was almost like a tryout. And Hepburn is perfect. She was originally flawless at comedy. Oh! Really, nobody like her. I, I think you can do a good class on acting comedy by just having somebody watch her whole stuff. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, it is kind of an early feminist film. It's touching on maybe gen- the first. Maybe yeah. the first. It's touching on gender double standards. It's touching on male fragility, which certainly was not <laughs> a phrase back then. Uh, I love when Spencer Tracy basically says, "I don't like being married to what's being called a new woman." I mean, it's and to hear him being flummoxed at all of the talents and, and attributes of his own wife. It's, it's just priceless. It gets the girl by crying. <laughs> I've <laughs> tried that, it doesn't it work, does that. <laughs> not in real life. <laughs> uh, just for people who might not have seen it before, there's several shots that are long dialogue scenes where one is where Catherine Hepburn is interviewing her new client, Judy Holliday. There's a great sequence where Tracy and Hepburn are making lamb curry together in the kitchen and having a really fascinating conversation. George Cukor makes that a static shot. What do you think about his choices along those lines? It's terrific, but the fact that she had that rhythm and that energy, you, you almost don't have to cut. So much of the film, of course, takes place in the courtroom. Are you a courtroom movie fan? I am. Oh, I used to be a real life courtroom fan. Like when I was out of work, I'd go to watch trials. When were you out of work? I mean, it was, there was a period, there was a hunk. Really? Yeah, yeah. Decades ago. <laughs> yes. Right, of course. And I want to also talk real briefly about David Wayne, because I really find his performance as the lovelorn neighbor across the hall so interesting and charming. What's your take on him? It's great because you can't judge it. He's sort of lecherous and awful, and, 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 and you have affection for him. Right. It's, yeah. it's super charming, and it's a great kind of love triangle, and, you know, any of us who know and love broadcast news know that you love and a good love song. And he sings the song, Farewell Amanda, yeah. which did not get good reviews at the time. The movie got good reviews, the song did not. I think that's unfortunate. <laughs> I, I never knew that detail. <laughs> well, it's a That's class. pretty picky. <laughs> it's picky. If, I mean, I guess that's what critics do. They critique. It's a great film. I'm so glad that you chose it. Let's take a look. From 1949, here are Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn in Adam's Rib. And I'm back with James L. Brooks to talk a little bit more about Adam's Rib. And Jim, my understanding is that Katherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, of course, were very, very good friends with Ruth Gordon and Garson Kane. I mean, there was a whole troupe back then, almost with George Cukor, too. What do you think it adds to the equation when a screenwriter or screenwriters are so close with the people who are performing their scripts and their lives? Uh, it's, it's how theater goes, and, and, and to a tremendous extent. And I think it's... I think it's the only healthy way to go. There's one line that I definitely took note of that I just think is so brilliant, where Spencer Tracy says to Katherine Hepburn, no matter what you think you think, you think the same as I think. <laughs> and to have a triple repetition of you think is just brilliant. Like, where did they come up with all of this Pretty stuff? Good. I would love to yeah, know. Yeah. Do you ever, are you ever super impressed with yourself as you're coming up with something really timeless? I think sort of there's a, there's a contest going on between self-flagellation and, gee, that was good, yeah. <laughs> that sounds healthy, or does it not? <laughs> it, it's fine in limited stretches, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about your most recent project, which is the film adaptation of the Judy Bloom novel, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, directed by Kelly Freeman Craig yeah. and starring Abby Ryder Fortson and Rachel McAdams. It's so much fun, it's so moving, and it's something that I would encourage anyone to see. I think it's one of the best adaptation jobs I've, I've, I've ever seen. The book has, has been around for 50 years and lasted 50 years for a reason. 
and, and, and to catch that moment of adolescence so perfectly. Kelly and her adaptation just increased two roles, including Rachel's role, and it becomes such a telling part of the story about three women. It sure is. Yeah. Kathy Bates being the third. Yeah. And your young star, Abby Ryder Fortson, just blew me away. So natural. I think we'll be watching her for a long time. I yeah. sure hope so. All right, we've got something else great to watch next. Your third choice coming up next, a classic from 1936, directed by and starring Charlie Chaplin. Next on TCM, Modern Times, then Safety Last, and later, Our Blushing Brides. TCM puts a ring on it tonight. 